Hi everyone, welcome to the Rugby League History Channel. I hope you're all well. Tonight's video is going to be the South Sydney Rabbitohs 2020 season review. And I'm going to be talking about some of the big moments of the year. I'm going to be talking about some of the players, some of the things that happened throughout the year and give you a comprehensive review and my thoughts on how South read it in the 2020 NRL season. Before I get into the video, I'm up to 276 subscribers at the moment. I'm trying to get to 300 by the end of the month. Um, I thank everyone that's recently subscribed to my channel. And I thank everyone that's been supporting me from the start. I'm getting close to that 300, but I need your help. So if you could share the videos, if you get the videos out there. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button. And you click that notification bell. Another thing I'll just add before I get into the video, um, I know that some people might be put off by my accent or the way that I talk or whatever, but all I gotta see that is give me a go. You know, just don't click off the video because just because I don't have you know an Australian accent or whatever, don't be scared. Stay to the end of the video and listen to what I have to see. <laughs> so getting into the South Sydney review for 2020. I actually had them in the top four. I predicted them to come in the top four at the start of the year. They ended up coming six. They had a win-loss record of 12 wins, eight losses. In the last 10 games, though, pretty impressive. Seven wins, three losses, and a very healthy for and against, plus 169. Now, starting off the year, things actually weren't that great for South to start off the year. They had a, a lucky win over Cronulla. If, if Cronulla would have thrown the ball maybe a couple of centimetres backwards instead of forwards, South Sydney would have lost the opening game. And then they had uh, losses against Eastern Suburbs, Melbourne and Penrith. So out of their, their first four matches, they only won the one match. And at that stage, I was a bit red-faced. I was thinking, uh, are South going to make me look daft because I predicted them to come in the top four? And they're not playing like a top four side. And then they had some uh, big wins over New Zealand and the Gold Coast. And uh, they were kind of starting to get their attack going. Their attack to start of the year was quite predictable, I think. And um, their defence wasn't great either. But they fixed that up towards the middle of the year. And this is this is a period of the year where I think that they turned the corner. Where they, they really clicked in the gear with their attack. And in a few matches this year... They scored three or four tries within about five, ten minutes. They just went bang, 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 bang. And they, they did that in, in quite a few matches. They did it against St. George. Now, I think that the turning point for their year for South was they beat North Queens in 31 points to 30 up in Townsville. And then after they, they won that match, after they come back for an impossible position, they ended up flogging Manly, 56 points to Eileen. They beat Parramatta 38-0. And then they, they come in and put a, a pretty good performance against the West Tigers where they scored three or four tries in, in five minutes there as well. And then they had the uh, the disappointing loss against Canterbury. And everyone went, South are not premiership contenders. They're not going to finish top four. They're, they're done. They're shot. And then in the final round of the year, and I think this game turned the competition on its head. Like, I think this result changed the way that the finals um, panned out in the long run so everyone went for Eastern Suburbs to beat South Sydney nobody gave South a chance and they come out and they beat their arch rivals 60 points to 8 and it was the biggest ever win that they've had over the Roosters in their history and as a result Eastern Suburbs dropped in the fourth place Parramatta got third and instead of South Sydney having to play Newcastle up there they got a home final against Newcastle they ended up beating Newcastle, 46 points to 20, where they were losing 40 nil, and once again, they just hit the blocks, they hit their straps, and they ended up scoring 46 unanswered points. There was some talk of whether they could do that the next week against Parramatta, and they did it again. They were behind on the scoreboard, Ian points to Ian at half time, they come out second half and stormed home, and then... In the preliminary final, I think that they put up a good fight against Penrith. Some might see that they got a bit unlucky, but I think um, they, they got close to winning that game, but unfortunately they fell short. Now, looking at some of their players this year and some of the stats, 
Adam Reynolds had a, a smashing year, top point scorer in the, in the competition. 221 points he finished with. Alex Johnston, he was trying to, I think, copy Reed Preston or Dave Brown, someone like that. He got 23 tries. Cody Walker, try assist, 21 try assists for the year. Very impressive. Tom Bages, he got the, the most runs and the most run meters. And uh, in some of the other categories, it was once again Alex Johnston, Adam Reynolds, Cody Walker, Damian Cook was there as well. I think um, some of the players this year, some of the players that really stood up were your likes of Adam Reynolds, Cody Walker had a smashing year, Alex Johnson. I thought Campbell Graham had a really good year. I think this year was his breakout year. I think he had a really good year. Uh, Latrell Mitchell, there was a lot of talk about him being the major off-season signing. He had, a, he had a slow start of the year, but... Uh, towards the middle of the year, he, you could see that he was getting fitter, he was getting more com uh, confident. And unfortunately for him, he got injured, ruled out for the year. Um, I think some of their, their forwards really stepped up this year. Thomas Bages, Liam Knight, Nichols, Cook. Cameron Murray was a bit quiet compared to other seasons, but I, I really liked him in defence. He could rely, rely on him in defence. And uh, some of their bench players, like uh, Khalil Matungi and Tavita Totolo, players like that, they, they um, had a good season as well. Now, for the, the preliminary final, this was their third preliminary final in a row for South Sydney. And what a lot of people haven't really touched on is that for the third year in a row, they went into the game as the underdogs. So 2018, they were up against the minor premiers in Eastern Suburbs. 2019, they were against Canberra, who had that massive wave. And it was a home final for Canberra. And everyone was thinking Canberra were going to win, and they did. And then uh, on Saturday, they played against Penrith, who were going for, I think, 17 wins in a row, finished runaway minor premiers. So <clears throat> um, I think for you South fans out there that, that might be upset about losing the preliminary final... I know it might be a bit frustrating, but you have to understand that you went into the game as the underdogs and it's not like you were region hot favourites this year, last year and the year before. There's, there's a different feeling when it comes to losing a preliminary final when you when you are the favourite and you're expected to win. I should know that being a power about the fans seen it happen many times. Um, now looking at some of the, the players that were injured for that preliminary final against Penrith, Latrell Mitchell, he was out for the air. James Roberts wasn't there. Campbell Graham was out. Now, would they have won the, the game with those players? Who knows, but it, it certainly would have helped. I think if uh, South Sydney were, were full strength, I think uh, I think they probably would have finished top four, maybe. I think they probably did miss Latrell Mitchell and James Roberts. I think... Uh, Touching on some other players that did well, I think Stephen Masters, for his first year in, in the NRL, I thought he had a good good debut year. He didn't play many games, but when he when he came into the side, he, he did the job that was asked of him. And I think Corey Allen as well. Corey Allen was the third choice full back full back slash winger for South. He hadn't played a, a game all year because there was no reserve game, and he came in and he he did a really good job. I think. Corey Allen, so he should be very, very proud of his season. Now, if I was to go into some of the, the big moments of South, some of the, the wins that South Sydney fans would be happy with, obviously the 60 points to win, win, win over East and Suburbs, Sydney Roosters, that's a big one, that's, a, that's probably the highlight. But then also, I mean, the wins over Parramatta, both of them, the 38-0 one especially, the win over Newcastle, 46 points to 20. I mean, South Sydney played, had some really good passages, passages of play this year. They, they really turned up for some matches. I'd say the lowest moment for the year was obviously the 26 points to 16 loss against Canterbury in the second last round of the year. Very disappointing. Very disappointing for me as well because if Canterbury wouldn't have won that game, they would have got the wooden spoon. So even though South Sydney's my second favourite club in the NRL um, I guess you owe me for that one South so you're going to have to come up with something next year to, to pay me back for that 
But overall, I think South had a smashing year. I think for all you South fans watching out there, you should be very proud of your team. They did really well. And looking at the crystal ball for next year, I think South are going to be up there again. They've still got um, a good group of players. They've got a good group. Um, they've got a good spirit in that team. And they got Wayne Bennett in there, who's a winner. And I think he did a great job as coach again once, once more this year. And they'll be back there again. I think uh, South would to, will learn from these preliminary final losses and maybe they might go one better. They might, they might meet the grand final next year. Who knows? But uh, if you're a South fan, you should be proud of your team for what they've done in 2020. So anyways, everyone, that's me, South Sydney review for the 2020 NRL season. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. And make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking that subscribe button. I've got some more videos coming up very shortly. So stay tuned for those. Anyways, everyone, I'm going to get out of here and enjoy your Tuesday. All right, tatty bye.